Hey guys, Dave Andrade here. What we're going to look at today is the new DaVinci Resolve 12. Now at the re time of this recording, it's only a beta version. So they're still, you know, they're sending it out to the public and letting you play with it. And actually it works really good, but obviously it's just the beginning of something new. Uh, obviously Resolve's been around for a while, but now they're trying to turn it into a full-fledged uh, non-linear editor. So that way you can edit and color, export, do everything from right within the program, which is fantastic. Uh, so let's start off. I'm going to grab my folder here uh, and let's pick a random clip. I just have a folder of movies here, so I honestly don't recall which one this is. But you can go ahead and drag right from Windows into the application. So let me go ahead and minimize this. This, of course, will resize everything down here on the Media tab. This is where you're going to bring everything in. If you don't like that, you can switch from Thumbnail View over to List View. It's the same thing you can do in Adobe Premiere Pro, which is great. And actually, if you're extremely used to the way you operate in Premiere Pro, they've actually made it really easy to make the transition. If we come down here to Project Settings, down the Keyboard Mapping, change it from DaVinci Resolve to uh, Adobe Premiere Pro and again that will just make everything much easier for the transition but let's go ahead and cancel out of there I'll double click here and here's our footage and just like with most applications we can go ahead and use JKNL I'm hitting uh, L there to move forward K to stop and J to come back so that's fantastic so let's go ahead and go into the edit tab I'm going to grab the footage, come over here, drag it into the timeline. And using the Adobe Premiere Pro reference, this would basically be a program monitor and this would be a source monitor. And I'm not going to go too much into the editing portion today. If you guys would like to see a video about that, go ahead and leave me a message below and I'll go ahead and make uh, one for uh, the editing. I just want to do a really quick overview on the new DaVinci Resolve 12 here. So this is where most of, now obviously you can resize the timeline here, which is nice and easy. This is where most of the new features are going to be. And they've made it extremely efficient uh, to uh, perform your edits here. Uh, so let's go ahead, but let's, again, let's move on from the editing for a second. Go ahead and go into color. And as you can see, it, it actually pulls up the codec that, that was recorded in. Apple ProRes 422. A couple of things to go through. We have the uh, node uh, tree over here. Obviously we have the footage here where most of the uh, the magic happens down here. Timeline, the keyframe uh, timeline right down here. Now what they've done with the older versions of Resolve, you had to have a specific monitor size. I believe it was 1600 by 900, something along those lines. And if not, it wouldn't resize. I think what they're trying to do with this one is actually make it conform to different monitors. They're really, from what I'm gathering, they're really trying to get this widespread. So that way a lot of people start using it, uh, especially for the, their editing now and their coloring. And it works on a lot of different platforms. And with using this and with using the older version, you know, older versions of Resolve, They've definitely made the performance better too. I know there used to be some lag and it used to not work with the, I don't know if it was the RAM or the processor or what it was, but they've, they've made, they definitely made the application a lot more proficient. Now in this particular monitor here, and I use this monitor for an example, is you can see how it's relatively small in here. But what I'll show you is, number one, if you click down in the middle of your mouse, and then drag, you can resize. Now that's good for something like this. If you just hover over the image and then roll the middle mouse button, there you go. Again, I'm gonna click the middle mouse button there and drag down and we can get very specific. Now if that's still not enough for you, uh, you don't have to worry about that. If you go ahead and hit Shift F, you get a full screen version. Same thing, I'm gonna roll out my mouse here, I'm actually rolling down. I'm going to click on it, drag it up, and roll in. Same thing to go back, Shift F. 
But also with this version, what you can do is remove some of the options that you see. Let's go ahead and click on this. So the gallery is going on the left hand side. The clips, we can do that. And now the clip, let me go ahead and show you again. There, there it was, there it goes. So you have those options too. We can hover right here. See if I can get it, there we go. I'll slide this over. So now we see what we really need to see and all our nodes are gonna be right over here, which is fantastic. I'll run you through a couple quick things with the color. And uh, like I said, this is just gonna be a quick overview if you guys are really interested. Um, and I may do this anyway, is go ahead and come out with some more DaVinci Resolve 12 videos. And there's a reason for that and I'll explain in just a little bit. So the curves are obviously different. I think this is an incredible layout. Uh, nothing wrong with the side-by-side -side version they had in the other one, but this is, this is great. So we can come in here, we have all the different channels, Y for the Luma. We can slide this over. Now let me point out, I might be drifting a little bit from speed grade. I know that maybe some of you subscribe to my channel for the um, speed grade tutorials. It may have been for color grading or, or something along those lines. But the program just isn't holding up. Uh, with this particular option here, you can move all these different locations there and um, you just have more flexibility within this application. Another thing that I thought was really nice too, let's go ahead and add some points here. So let's, uh, let's add up some random ones. All right. Now, of course, that's the usual S-curve. You may be familiar with that. Now, if we come over here, editable splines. So now, whichever one's selected, you can actually come in here and make even more adjustments. Now, it's not, now this is very precise. What you can do, and I'll show you right now, you don't have to go ahead and just take the splines, move up and down and hope for the best. And, like, hey, maybe I want the darks to be a little bit darker and, and do something like that. If you wanted more control, I'm going to go ahead and drag this out. And you can see right where my mouse is over here, it's going to come down just like that. Now, if you didn't want it to be that severe, you could drag this right in, pull it in. And now it's more of a gradual slide. Same thing with the other side. We can go ahead and do this come down here maybe we want to make it more severe and do something like that I'm gonna reset that by clicking this button I can actually add the um, default anchors by doing this and of course we can come in here and now we get the red channel green channel and the blue channel now I've already addressed this in another video but I'll do a quick uh, color theory uh, lesson with you we have blue here top left it's going to be blue bottom right it's going to be yellow we're going to come into green top right it's green bottom it's magenta for red top left it's going to be more red bottom right it's going to be teal and if I'm going to reset this again now staying in the red channel I like this option right here what it's going to do is I uh, actually I'll go ahead and show you if I drag this down it's going to make it's going to lessen the contrast, and I'll show you what I mean. If we pull this down, you can see it's going to take the white points, make them darker, the black points, it's going to make them lighter. So what this means is you're never going to have a true, at least in the red channel, you're never going to have a true black point, quote unquote, and uh, not a true white point over here. Sorry, white point and black point. So let's go ahead and reset this. Now the other thing I like about how efficient this is and how this doesn't compare to speed grade is this right here. All these options, hue versus hue. So let's take, uh, let's see if we can grab something here. I'm gonna use the eyedropper, click on that. It brings it up here. Now we can go ahead and change that down here. Bring it up. 
Actually, so go ahead and widen that just a little bit. It doesn't look like it's encompassing too much of that drum set right there, so. You're actually seeing a lot of this in its face. Let's go ahead and uh, bring that in. Essentially what you're doing is mapping a color to a different color. But really, all that speed grade has is only one of these options. And I'm very surprised that they don't have the hue versus hue. That's an extremely popular one. It's more efficient than secondaries. I mean, I really like secondaries personally, but uh, hue versus hue is fantastic. And uh, it's just not included with speed grade. They actually only have the regular curves, which are a little bit, they don't have as much capabilities as I showed you as Resolve does. And you don't have many options as you do here. I mean, you have five different options here for the different types of curves that you have. Hue versus luminance. You could say, maybe I want the uh, yellow ones here. I'm going to make them less bright, more. You can't see it in the footage here, unless we find something that has a little bit of yellow. But I was just trying to show you. There you go. A little bit of bright on the symbol. Now we can make it darker. Luminance versus saturation, saturation versus saturation. It's, uh, it's great what extent they've included with this. Now, th this was stuff that they did have in older versions. It's just they've made everything more concise. We're going to come here. We have the color wheels. Right now, we have the bars. But if we come over here, primary wheels. Now, this is very familiar, I'm assuming, to most people. A lot of uh, nonlinear editors and, and color grading programs uh, have this. So let's go ahead and move on. We have the log wheels, the RGB mixer. This is not included in this version. I believe this is only include, included with the, um, the paid version. This is the free one. This is the qualifier. I won't go into this right now, but this has always been great. You can go ahead and come in here. Let's go ahead and do this. And you can see what it's selecting. You can come down here and adjust it. Let's say we want to uh, move the center, make it more orange. Uh, you know what? Let's come back to its red. It's going to include more of the red. Saturation. I'm going to add more saturation in here. Try to grab with those colors. Uh, but long story short, I mean, that's what you're getting with this one. So let me go ahead and uh, reset this. So the qualifier is still fantastic. We can create our own power windows, the 3D tracker, the blur options, a keyer. Now this is great, especially with green screen footage. And that's pretty much it, guys. I will start to put out more videos regarding this. Uh, if you guys had specific requests, go ahead and let me know, and I can kind of streamline everything that way. But uh, I like it. I like what they're trying to do with this application. I don't know that it's going to be in its, in its current iteration, if it's going to be my editor, um, especially when there's uh, deadlines involved, stuff like that. If I'm editing a wedding video or something along those lines, I need to have it out in a certain time frame. Obviously, I can go ahead and delve into this application. I mean, I'm familiar with the color side, but the editing is still, you know, relatively new. So it's one of those things. And there's always bugs with the first time that an application introduces new features. So will it replace Premiere Pro for me, which is what I use? Probably not. I can still go ahead and take the information out of that and move it into this application and do my color grading there. And for what it's worth, Premiere Pro is, is great as far as color grading is concerned. And I'm not even referring to the Lumetri tree. I can pull some great secondaries with um, the three-way color corrector and curves. It, those options right there, if you were adding the secondaries to those, you can you can get a great key on, on those on the footage that you have. But again, will it replace my editor? Probably not. I'll start using it. We'll see how it goes. I'll see where the pitfalls are, what's good, what's bad. Will it replace speed grade? Probably. Um, not that I don't already use Resolve. However, I was using speed grade just because it was efficient. Now, with everything that they've included within Premiere, the biggest thing for me within Premiere was that they didn't have good scopes. 
Speedgrade had the great scopes. Now the scopes have moved, moved over to Premiere Pro. S and with Resolve, I like Resolve's scopes also. Which, by the way, if I come over here, you can go ahead and dock them right down here. But what I'm trying to say is, as powerful as Speedgrade is, it does have its downfalls. It has some effects that don't work. It almost isn't serving a purpose anymore. And I hate to say that because it is such a great application. But with the way that they've re redesigned DaVinci 12, I think my new workflow going forward will consistently be Premiere Pro to resolve. If they can get the editing, or if I can get used to the editing process for Resolve 12, then maybe I'll switch over entirely. I probably will stick with my CC subscription because I do use the other programs. Um, I, I use the photography ones and uh, a lot of the other stuff that they offer. So if nothing else, I'll probably still stick with Adobe because uh, I do use After Effects and I use a lot of programs like that. So, But uh, I'm really impressed. Again, hopefully I wasn't too long-winded, especially with just doing an introduction video like this. If you guys like this video, go ahead and subscribe. That way you guys can keep an eye out for those videos which I plan on releasing, and I'll talk to you soon. Thanks.